opportunity for chocolatiers to showcase their talent by going beyond the traditional chocolate-filled eggs. The third-generation chocolate makers borrowed the catchphrase, follow the rabbit, from Lewis Carroll's book, Alice's Adventure in Wonderland, for their latest chocolate collection. They're hoping it'll attract some of the many Brussels residents who will shop for chocolate in the city's historic Sablon district. That's a square renowned for having a chocolate maker on each corner, otherwise known as Susan Simon's heaven. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's hard. Yeah, they're spectacular. Good stuff. All right, that's our time for now. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow, News 3 at 5 starts right now. And right now at 5, a Beloit student allegedly sexually assaulted multiple girls on a school-sanctioned field trip. How getting access to the medications that you need sooner could be easier under a new proposal. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 5. And thanks for staying with News 3 Now at 5. First, we want to get a look at your first alert forecast. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti watching the potential for severe weather. Gary? Yeah, there's a big temperature contrast right across southern Wisconsin, and that may fuel some strong to severe thunderstorms over the next few hours. If you take a look at current temperatures, right now, Madison is at 58. Temperatures are only in the upper 40s near Lake Michigan and Milwaukee, but to the south, temperatures are in the middle 70s across northern Illinois. So there's about a 30 degree temperature spread across our viewing area, and visible cloud track is starting to show clusters of strong to occasionally severe thunderstorms developing over parts of eastern Iowa. In fact, on Doppler track, this morning's thunderstorms have moved up to the north. We're kind of in, uh, in between with the warm front lifting to the north and a cold front coming in from the west with a line of thunderstorms moving through Iowa. Right now, there are a couple of uh, severe thunderstorm warnings uh, located uh, over the uh, eastern portion of Iowa, one uh, near uh, Des Moines and the other to the west of Waterloo as a line of thunderstorms starts to develop out there. The uh, high uh, future radar over the next three hours shows that line of storms moving into southwestern Wisconsin by about 7 to 8 o'clock and probably into the Madison area by about 8 to 10 o'clock tonight. So we'll have to keep an eye out on these uh, storms as they head in our direction. Storm Prediction Center does have us under a slight risk of severe thunderstorms. Again, current temperatures range from the 40s in the northern parts of our viewing area to the 70s down toward the Illinois state line. And those winds have shifted to the south, just to the south of Madison. So as that warm front continues to lift northward, we actually may see our temperatures rise a little bit uh, for tonight. Wind gusts not too strong right now, but you can see uh, the uh, winds generally out of the south, uh, just to our south. Temperatures will probably climb into the middle 60s here in Madison before they drop to about 57 by midnight and then to look for showers and thunderstorms to end later on tonight. A chance of showers, but a cooler day for tomorrow with a high temperature of 52. We'll have more details and weather in just a few minutes. Okay, Gary, thank you. Parents are demanding action from the school district of Beloit after a report that a student allegedly sexually assaulted multiple girls on a school-sanctioned field trip. A police report from Florida contains the allegations that a parent says happened on a banned trip. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter joins us from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with the latest. Adam? Well, Eric and Susan, I've been repeatedly calling the school district of Beloit all day long, asking for a response as to how they're handling these allegations that one male student inappropriately touched several female students over the course of several days on a school sanctioned field trip. Now, they haven't responded to any requests for comment at this time, but here's what we do know tonight, and that is that a report was filed with the Orange County Sheriff's Office in Florida that shows in early April several incidents of assault occurred between one male suspect and multiple female victims who were on a school field trip. The Beloit Daily News reports that the Orange County officials sent that report to the Beloit police because they didn't believe these events happened in their jurisdiction. Beloit police said they did not get that report and that they're not involved in the investigation right now. And earlier today, I spoke with a woman who says she is a family member of one of these alleged victims. This is, you know, um, sexual assault. And that is not, that's not getting into a fight. That's not disrespecting a teacher. That is violating another human being and in a way that will affect them for the rest of their lives. 
Now, this mother says she's frustrated by the lack of response from the school district and local police. And again, Beloit police saying today that they are not involved in this investigation. According to this police report from Florida, it says that the parents were contacted at the time and they chose not to press charges. But again, this family member telling me today that they were never contacted during this whole process. Again, we've called the school district of Beloit several times today asking for a comment. The latest I have from them is that they're working on an official statement but they have nothing to say just at this moment. Adam Duxter, live in Janesville. Adam, thank you. The Iowa County District Attorney died suddenly in Dodgeville yesterday. The DA's office said Larry Nelson suffered a pulmonary embolism or a blood clot while at his office. Nelson graduated from the UW-Madison Law School and served as the district, uh, the assistant district attorney first and also corporation counsel in Iowa County for 17 years. Nelson was appointed district attorney by Governor Jim Doyle back in 2006. A man who pled guilty to a string of violent attacks on the UW campus was sentenced today. Coleman Chung of Monona will spend the next 22 and a half years behind bars. Our Keely Arthur was in the courtroom and she joins us at the Dane County Courthouse with the latest. Keely. Well, Chung will remain, will remain locked up for the next two decades, but that is not good enough for one of his victims who pleaded with the judge today to give him a heavier sentence. Now, in court, prosecutors detailed what happened in the fall of 2017 over the four days. On September 29th, Coleman Chung violated a 17-year-old girl passed out at Gordon Commons. The next day, he put a woman in a chokehold and attempted to rob her. And then on October 2nd, he tried putting a woman in his trunk and then hit her with a hatchet when she resisted. One of the survivors spoke in court outraged at the sentence. When I was told by my attorney that Mr. Chung's plea agreement was 22 years, I was really disappointed. I assume that 22 years was applied to just my assault. When she clarified that it was for all three assaults, I was in disbelief. Um, I do not believe that this is a fair sentence. He has no conscience. He did his best to try and take away my life. The prosecution and defense had reached the deal of 22 and a half years prior to the sentencing. Judge Ellen Burr said without that agreement, Chung's crimes could have put him behind bars for more than 60 years. Now in court, Chung was remorseful, saying now that he would not wish what he had done to those victims on his worst enemy. We will hear more from him on News 3 Now at 6. Kelly Arthur reporting live. Kelly, thank you. Police say a man shot in the hand early this morning in Janesville lied to them. Officers were called to the 400 block of North Terrace overnight. They found the injured man who told them someone tried robbing him at gunpoint. He struggled with the attacker over the gun before being shot, but police say investigators determined the injured man had given them false information and that the shooting actually happened inside his home. Anyone with information about this case is asked to call Janesville Police. The Dodge County Sheriff's Office is looking for information that could lead to an arrest after a man allegedly stole boats from a water ski show team in Beaver Dam. According to the sheriff, people responded to a Craigslist ad for boat motors and traded cash and other items for the boats. The ski team said the boats are valued at $95,000 and were stolen from one of its storage sheds. Last week, the two boats were recovered in Illinois, but were missing parts of their motors. According to the people who met the suspect on Craigslist, the man with the boats told the people his name was Mark Jones, but went by the nickname Earl. Deputies say he was driving a newer maroon or dark red Ford extended cab pickup truck. The Milwaukee Bucks are gearing up to take on the Detroit Pistons. It is game two of their Eastern Conference playoff series. Milwaukee defeated Detroit by 35 in game one. Our Kevin Lewis is live from Pfizer Forum with what we can expect in game two. Hi, Kevin. Susan, hello. Uh, the Pistons tried just about everything to try and slow down the Bucks in game one of the Eastern Conference playoffs. Nothing worked, especially not trying to keep Giannis Antetokounmpo away from the basket. Now, the Bucks don't ask Giannis to be a jump shooter because he absolutely owns the paint. He led the league in points in the paint scored this year. And the only person to score more in the paint in the last 20 years is Shaq. Giannis knows people want to push him away from the rim. He just doesn't plan on going. People are scared when I get in the paint. So he's basically going to do whatever it takes to make me shoot that shot. You know, there's going to be times I'm going to shoot the shot, and uh, when I feel like it's going to go in, I'm going to overshoot it. But, uh, you know, I'm going to try to drive it as many times as I can. I can create so much uh, plays for my team, and, and I can create plays for uh, myself also. 
Coming up on News 3 Now Sports at 6 o'clock, we'll hear from the Bucks' supporting cast as they try to pull a repeat performance from Game 1. And we'll show you why you can't take any plays off because the basketball gods might be watching. That's coming up at 6 o'clock. Right now from the Pfizer Forum, I'm Kevin Lewis, News 3 Now Sports. All right, should be an interesting matchup once again, Kevin. Thank you. Governor Tony Evers says the state is looking at reworking the deal with Foxconn since he says the scope of the project has clearly been downsized. Governor Evers says it is unrealistic now to think the company will reach its goal of 13,000 employees in the state and also make $10 billion in capital investments in Wisconsin. If those goals are reached, the state would be on the hook for $3 billion in incentives over the next 15 years. Clearly, the, uh, the deal that was struck is no longer in play. And so we, we will be working with uh, uh, individuals at Foxconn and, of course, at, with WEDC to figure out how um, a, uh, a new set of parameters uh, should be negotiated. In Republicans responding, Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald saying, quote, if the state is willing to renege on its commitment to Foxconn and open up a contract without agreement by both parties, then what guarantee can Wisconsin make to any other company that wants to expand here? Getting access to the medications you need could soon be easier under a new proposal at the state capitol. The plan would make reforms to step therapy, which is a practice that insurance companies use to help control costs and risks of prescription drugs. As Rose Schmidt explains, patients say these reforms are needed. Yeah, so members of the Wisconsin Step Therapy Coalition suffer from conditions like arthritis, psoriasis, or cancer. They joined the group after they say insurance companies denied their repeated attempts to get the right medications in favor of cheaper and sometimes not as experimental options. But patients are hoping a new proposal could change that. This is so important. For those living with a costly chronic condition, they can't express that enough. My name is Stephanie Block. As Stephanie Block recounted her medical history for a committee of lawmakers. I am here to speak in support of SB 26. You could not help but feel her emotion as she advocated for a bill she says could change many lives. I want to thank you all for working hard for Wisconsin patients and ensuring we can have access to the medications that we need. <sighs> Thank you for your attention, and I will be happy to answer your questions. Stephanie was diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis when she was only eight years old. So I've had this pretty much my entire life. I don't remember not having arthritis. But what she can remember is all the hurdles she's had to jump through ever since. I actually was stepped twice. By stepped, she means step therapy. It's a process where a doctor prescribes a medication and the insurance companies say instead the patient has to try a cheaper option first. After a year of different medications, being sick, irritable, and even a hospital stay, Stephanie was finally able to get the right one. I shouldn't have to suffer for an entire year just to get on the medication that the doctor said, hey, this is going to work. I ended up working. The proposal she's advocating for would allow patients to ask for an exception to the step therapy protocol. Insurance companies would be forced to grant or deny the request within three days or one day during emergencies. In the cases where individuals face complex chronic and progressive conditions, uh, they need to be able to work with their doctor to expedite that process. While insurance companies have argued that step therapy keeps costs low before riskier and more expensive drugs are prescribed, the latest version of the proposal is a compromise with broad support from lawmakers and groups advocating for people with chronic conditions. One medication could be a deal breaker for them and that doctor is going to be in the best position to know that. And gives patients more empowerment to know what works best for them. Knowing that they can get the medication that they need within 24 to 72 hours is life changing. More than 50 lawmakers on both sides of the aisle have signed on to this proposal, and it's authored by the Republican heads of the state's budget committee. Similar legislation has been passed in 21 states. Thanks, Rose. Still to come on News 3 Now at 5. Up next, the hunt for a woman who authorities say was obsessed with the Columbine school massacre. That search is now over, and we will have the latest. The attorney general announces new rules that will impact thousands of asylum seekers. And on Wall Street, the Dow off three points in midweek trading. The Nasdaq loses four. The S&P 500 down almost seven. We'll be right back.
The search is now over for an armed and dangerous woman in Colorado who authorities say was infatuated with the Columbine massacre and posed a possible threat to more than a half million students in the Denver area. 18-year-old Sol Pais took her own life this morning after 24 hours on the run. A SWAT team descended on a remote campground about 45 miles west of Denver after receiving tips that she was in the area. Investigators say Pais did not make any threats to a specific school, but her actions were enough to concern law enforcement and school officials that hundreds of schools closed today. To close an entire metro area is not an easy decision, but at the end of the day, it's the right decision, the best decision to protect all of our kids. The 20th anniversary of the Columbine massacre, which resulted in the deaths of one teacher and 12 students, is Saturday. Attorney General William Barr trying to put an end to the catch and release policies for immigrants seeking asylum. Barr's decision says asylum seekers who are determined to have credible fear will no longer be eligible to be released on bond while awaiting a court hearing. Now, this ruling only applies to asylum seekers who enter illegally, but the Trump administration's immigrant policies have yet to stop the surge of immigrants at the border. Customs and Border Patrol released this video showing a group of almost 400 immigrants crossing the border in Arizona on Tuesday. I had to allocate virtually an entire station to begin transporting this group of 400 to a secure location to provide care, to provide medical attention for them. The new rules will not go into effect for 90 days, so Border Patrol can work out the logistics of holding thousands of immigrants for months on end. To weather now, Gary is here keeping an eye on a line of storms. Gary? Yeah, we have severe weather that's developing uh, just out to the west. What's happened is we had some thunderstorms this morning. Those lifted to the north, and then we saw some breaks in the clouds, and temperatures have really been warming up to our south. And just ahead of a cold front, notice these uh, clusters of strong to severe thunderstorms developing over the uh, western portion of of Iowa. You can see these storms right now starting to form a line from around Waterloo to just to the uh, north and west of Des Moines. In fact, looks like uh, we got a uh, severe thunderstorm warning there until 515. Uh, the other severe thunderstorm warning farther to the north looks like that has uh, expired. But still, uh, these storms are capable of producing hail. Uh, all of these little thunderstorm cells here are moving off toward the east at about 40 miles per hour. And because of that, that brings the potential for not only large hail, but maybe even the possibility for an isolated tornado at least according to the Storm Prediction Center. This is future radar for the next three hours, and you can see how this line of storms is basically heading towards southwestern Wisconsin. So this is by about uh, a little after 8 o'clock. That would take the storms to uh, around Platteville and Lone Rock and heading toward the Madison area, probably between about 9 and 10 o'clock tonight. Now, the Storm Prediction Center has us under a slight risk of severe thunderstorms. The marginal risk areas to the north and east of Madison where temperatures are a little cooler and hail would be the main threat there. And as you can see, the tornado threat is actually highest over southwest southwestern Wisconsin into eastern Iowa. This is about a, a 5% chance within 25 miles of a point of a tornado uh, being uh, developed sometime this evening. The uh, hail threat a little bit higher, uh, that over southwestern Wisconsin, much of eastern Iowa and northern Illinois, that's about a 15% chance. And the high wind threat is highest farther to the south across eastern Illinois, just about a 5% chance over uh, much of southern Wisconsin because of the cool air near the ground. Rainfall amounts over the next uh, oh, 12 hours or so, probably looking at about a quarter to a half Half inch, but there could be spots that see an excess of an inch in a heavier thunderstorm. There was a line of thunderstorms that moved uh, between the Twin Cities and Eau Claire that produced three to four inches of rain earlier today and some problems with flash flooding. The live view from the Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam in Platteville, skies are mostly cloudy, but every once in a while you'll see a break in the clouds. This is the uh, WISC Sky Cam looking off toward the east with mostly cloudy skies. Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison also showing cloudy skies. As we check out the almanac for today, our high temperature 58 so far, the low temperature at 46. Right now we're at 58 degrees. That's our high for the day. And that may go up a little bit because winds now are shifting to the southeast at 14 miles per hour. In fact, that strong southwesterly wind aloft is pushing that warm front northward. The cold front will eventually come in from the west and put an end to the severe weather threat later on tonight. That's right around here. And you can see how that warm front drapes through southern Wisconsin. And look at the difference in temperatures. 58 in Madison, 41 right now in Wausau, 74 in Chicago, 78 in Springfield, and 83 degrees in St. Louis. And dew point temperatures 
temperatures are climbing into the 70, or 60s just ahead of that cold front. So enough moisture is there to fuel some more uh, strong to severe thunderstorms, at least over the next few hours. So for tonight, low of 48 after the showers and thunderstorms end late tonight. But some of those this evening could have high winds, hail and heavy rainfall. Then for tomorrow, a much cooler day. We're behind the cold front. Those winds shift around to the north and northwest. High temperature at 52 and there'll be a slight chance for some showers. As we take a look at future track, you can see most of the thunderstorms moving out of here this evening. Then temperatures dropping into the upper 40s by morning. Tomorrow, just a slight chance of a shower, but temperatures only in the lower 50s thanks to northerly winds. Tomorrow night, the clouds start to break up toward morning with lows dropping to the upper 30s. And then winds out of the north on Friday, high temperature 57. It'll be sunny but kind of breezy. And as we take a look again at the rainfall amounts, about a quarter to a half inch for the amounts in excess of an inch in a heavier thunderstorm. Seven to 10 day forecast. Notice those temperatures going back up for the Easter weekend near 70 on Easter Sunday. Just a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm. Temperatures mainly in the 60s for much of next week. As we take a look at first alert traffic right now, this is the view from the DOT camera at the Beltline and Park Street. You can see the eastbound direction right now looking, or the westbound direction actually, looking pretty slow. Uh, right now we're seeing delays on the eastbound side starting around Monona Drive going back to near Verona Road. Westbound the delays right around Park Street to John Nolan Drive. As far as travel times are concerned, 28 minutes on the eastbound Beltline from University Avenue to the interstate, 17 minutes back in the westbound direction. Heading out of Madison, it's 28 minutes down to Janesville on I-3990, 17 minutes to uh, Sauk City on US-12, and 20 minutes to Sun Prairie on East Washington Avenue and US-151. That's your news for now for Slurk Traffic. Thank you, Gary. Ahead at five students from all UW campuses showcase their research at the Capitol. We'll tell you what it's all about after a short break.
Students from UW campuses in Wisconsin are showcasing their research here in Madison. Around 130 undergrads shared their research finding at the Capitol Rotunda today. For the 16th year, students were able to showcase their work. Topics ranged from quality of Wisconsin waterways to the emotional impacts of Twitter to the effectiveness of drug court treatments and services. Students also develop their ability to manage a project, work with a team, and communicate ideas clearly. These benefits go far beyond the classroom and the research posters on display today. For the first time, the event featured a presentation by the Water Research Fellowship Program, which researched the quality of water on all UW campuses. Imagine cutting your travel time between major cities down from hours to just minutes. If you're up or riding in a pod that shoots through a tube at high speeds, that could soon become reality. The Badger Loop team will be revealing their Hyperloop pod before they enter it in a worldwide competition. The 50 to 60 undergrad students on the team are getting ready for tonight, as well as the fourth annual SpaceX Hyperloop competition this summer, and that's where the students pod will go head to head with more than a dozen other university led teams from all around the world. The Badger Loop team will be judged on only one thing, maximum speed. This is their fourth pod, and although they haven't won the top prize before, they say their experience in modeling this pod after the last might just propel them this year. We've reused a lot of that design and we've we've learned from that, those mistakes that we've made and innovated on those designs to make it a lot better uh, and a lot more feasible for the actual competition. So that has a lot of exciting implications for this year's competition. And the Badger Loop team is one of the few to be invited to the competition every year since it started. And they say this year's pod has a strong, lightweight carbon fiber outer shell with possible speeds more than 100 miles per hour. It will be judged at the SpaceX competition in California in July. The public will be able to check out the pod well before that, starting with an unveiling tonight at 7 inside the Memorial Union. Well, I'll have another check of your forecast and the outlook for severe weather in just a moment. Stay with us.
keeping an eye on the storms. Yeah, right now things pretty quiet across most of our viewing area. The morning showers and storms have lifted to the north, the ones out to the west, just starting to move into eastern Iowa. Right now, the severe thunderstorm warning uh, located uh, between about Waterloo and Des Moines, Iowa. But if you take a look at uh, future radar over the next three hours, you can see how those storms gradually lift off toward the northeast and through much of southwestern Wisconsin. Storm Prediction Center has just come out with a discussion saying that they are monitoring southwestern Wisconsin, eastern Iowa, and northern Illinois for a potential tornado watch within the next hour or so. Uh, temperatures right now range from the 40s to our northeast to the 70s over southwestern Wisconsin. And notice those winds out of the south, just to our south, so that warm front just south of Madison right now. And Gary will have more updates in 30 minutes. News 3 now at 6. CBS Evening News is next.